For all the best content on the planet that's free. No banner ads, banner free, and always a fun place to get all the data, data and information. And I'm um, here with Mark Manson, industry analyst, elusive, uh, omnipresent, uh, guru, Twitter uh, influencer. Um, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. <laughs> so tell us what your impressions, I'm only kidding by the way, you are influential, but we were chatting last night about uh, uh, big data. Um, what are you seeing right now, at the end of the show, day two, or day one, officially the big day, but really day two of the actual conference we've been broadcasting. Um, what are you seeing, what are your thoughts, what's the big, big trends that are popping out at you? Well, I think the big trends that are popping out are probably the shift from the early stage startup scene to the much broader enterprise IT market. I think that the era of startups selling technology to other startups is ending and the runways run out on the free cash from the VCs and now it's a, oh, enterprises want to buy this stuff and they have the money and the startup scene has run out of money, we better move. That's so, my nutshell. Oh, okay, let me just, let, we, have, we have some time to talk about that. So okay, we don't want, <laughs> okay, that's the end of our interview. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank no, you. No, no, so let's talk about that. So we just had um, mm -hmm. uh, John Stockdale on and he said, um, and big data is coming to the enterprise through the front door mm -hmm. and it's coming fast. So let's unpack that a little bit. So, um, you know, the rubber's meeting the road, okay? The VCs are funding quality and business value. So you got to have some tech <laughs> to enter the market. So you got to have some chops. Not a lot of, hey, I launched the company, I'm done. You know, celebrate, get my VC funding. There's some VC funding, there's some scrutiny right now on a lot of things, product market fit and the go to market path. So with respect to that, where are you seeing that business value connection on the product market fit and um, the, uh, the go to market for these companies to do the business value equation because no one's going to buy the hype, there's just too much noise right now. Yeah, there's a boatload of noise. So I would think that um what you have a lot of right now is technology searching for a solution, or you know, it's like, I have, I have this technology, what can I solve with it? As opposed to people actually asking for it. And that's a big problem if you're a tech company. You know, you've got a, it's a push. And in some areas, it's a pull from departments because they're frustrated with IT. So a lot of, a lot of the big data message has been around jettison your data warehouse, get rid of databases, do this, do that, it's faster, it's agile, it's easier, which it may or may not be. Um, or it's a part of the underserved. And when you look at things like transactional data, databases do it well. Time series, databases don't do it well. Um, networks, databases don't do it well. So what are you going to do? Well, you're going to have to turn to something else. And so we're seeing a lot of big data as applications sneaking into other parts of the organization. And what's that called? What kind of effect is that causing and you're seeing? I mean, obviously some confusion, but also some impact. It's causing some change, right? Yeah, it's causing change because you've got the IT people being disrupted. You've got a part of the IT organization that never dealt with data, developers dealing with data. And you have the data people being left out because they don't have the technology to support what these guys want. And so we're in this when worlds collide period yeah. where developers on one side, data guys on the other, each one talk, trying to talk the other's language. So, what are we people doing? I mean, I mean, what's your, what's your sense of the, obviously, obviously people can get stuck, mm -hmm. right? They can break through it. Uh, what are you seeing that the action right now on today's marketplace? I mean, is it, is it just, okay, everyone's got the pause button? Is it evaluation time? I mean, there is confusion. I mean, I was just talking to someone out there that's like, I don't know who to call. I walk into the exhibit hall and I see all this noise. I don't know who to call. I saw EMCs in the news, I, maybe I'll call them. Um, so there's a lot of, I don't know who to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> what are you seeing there? Because of the hype, because of the, com the confusion in the market, I think we've got a situation of disambiguation that has to happen, and this is probably the year that it does. Because people say it's an analytic solution. Well, maybe. Maybe SaaS is good enough. It's a database solution. Well, maybe database. And there, I think that you're seeing right now the straw men being thrown up by the vendors who are threatened, right? The Oracle or the IBM or the Informatica or your choice in the EMC. sort of, in the EMC, yes, yeah, the definitely in that story. Teradata. Everybody's else? being threatened. IBM. So well, let, me ask you a question. let me ask you a question. Teradata versus, e e uh, Teradata versus the EMC, mm -hmm. Green Plum. Who has, who's going to, which, which, what's going to happen there on the BI side or data warehouse side? Because you know, Green Plum came out with a very focused 
We're going after the data warehousing. SQL on Hadoop. Hadoop is a nice little Hadoop wash there. Come in, um, ride that. You're but talking about Hawk? Yeah, Hawk, yeah. And you got Teradata's already out there. You think they'll put a dent in Teradata, or? At this point, probably a very small dent, but EMC has a lot of feet on the street, so maybe, but well, you we'll really got to roll, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you okay. have to roll okay. back okay. a little bit and look at what does Teradata do, what does EMC do in this Hawk thing, and how are they different in terms of both implementation and what you can accomplish with them? And it comes down to worldview. If you believe the world is going to gravitate towards the database wrapping things like it has for the past 20 years, then Teradata might be the way. If you believe that bringing things like SQL to Hadoop and building out that world and migrating it closer to the enterprise data world, then it's the green plum side. And so I don't really know, to be honest, because they're both potentially viable futures yeah. right now. Well, it's roll like, back a little yeah. bit more, if you would. So where I was sure. going with that was you had you know Vertica and Atiza and Greenplum, you know, attacking essentially Teradata yeah. when they came out, the MPP guys, and yeah, they made a little bit of traction. They they got good exits, but Teradata did fine. Okay, now the big data thing comes on. It's like wave two of attack yeah. on Teradata, which kind of brings us forward to your last sure. comments. But I want to flip it now, because you consult to both the vendor community and the IT community. Yes. The, the, the practitioners. And so my, my question, and I think you've already answered it, but I'm going to ask it anyway, is my data, I'm an IT practitioner, is my data warehouse a dinosaur? It's not a dinosaur, but what you really have to do is look at the uses of information in an organization. And data warehousing is designed around assumptions of stability. Things don't change a lot. Core transactional data, essential financial pieces of information about the business. Customer data, behavioral data, external signal, never part of that. Inside the firewall, transactional apps. And so you've got the monitoring, see exceptions, and maybe do some analysis of those exceptions. Figure out the root cause of what's going on. Choose amongst three different choices, like I could make a decision to do X, Y, or Z, which one is going to lead to the best outcome and what are the downstream implications of that? Or forecast or predict this outcome. Uh, visual, data visualization stuff can't really run effectively off a of data warehouse because it's in human interactive time and data warehousing BI tools are not. And so how do, you how do I convince you that you need to change this thing that you're doing and we need to take this to the CEO and get it approved as a business project. And so convincing, educating, elucidating, laying out problems and explaining, all of that is part of a spectrum and the data warehousing market drew a little tiny box around the first piece which was monitor and identify exceptions and it's a very stable thing that very rarely changes. Right. That's where we are. Yeah, you described it very well. It's like this hardened piece of cement that you know, every month a little bit changes, you know, add yeah. some new data, whereas and this new world is, yeah. hey, let's redo everything. Yeah, well that's Cloud Era, <laughs> so I like that world view because it's kind of like, you know, Democrat, Republican, you know, pick your religious, uh, you know, view, it, and, and you only know it'll play out based upon what happens on the street. You right. know, the market will spin in whatever direction. Is it that though, or is it, is Democrat, you can make a case for either side, you can play well, point, no, but, well, Let's point, take right? what he was saying about the yeah. wrapper though, I mean, that's, that, there are use cases, but there'll always be these niche deployments, but what's going to really, when the world spins to whatever preferred environment use cases develop at scale, in terms of corporations. Right, so. That'll be defined by the solutions. And if wrapping it, and, and that's a package, it, a container, it, if you will. But if, if the, what do you want to call this new way? The, you know, the big data way, whatever, you called it green plum, whatever. If this new world delivers much more corporate productivity um, on a growth trajectory, almost like the microprocessor revolution, then yeah, it's not like, it's not, almost not a win or lose. It's like, this is the area that's well, going to now consume everybody's the attention and the get all the investment. It's a classic headroom, right? It's a headroom argument, right? It's like, hey, I'm going to do something today, and right. there's some headroom. So what do you or there's foreclosure, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm thinking You're the about expert, it. right? I mean, so John and I are sort of peripherally involved. I in, suspect in, in that having this. lived through the first set of BI and data warehousing wars, when we were telling mainframers that those reporting systems that they had been designing <laughs> were the wrong way to do it, and there was this data warehouse architecture, and it was a new way, y you ended up with, oh, OLTP is an IT architecture. It has its whole systems architecture and philosophy around it, and we renovated that in the whole Web 2.0 sort of stateless scale-out stuff. Then you take the, the data 
delivery side of the equation, the business intelligence data war warehouse market to date, and that was all about getting data in and getting it out to eyeballs. And now you've got a third piece, which is both that and machine to machine, like recommendation engines or whatever, or you know, automated detection and, and uh, management systems. I think you're seeing the evolution of a third piece of architecture, which is processing, right? Because databases are for storing and retrieving data. They're not for processing. OLTP is for recording transactions and, and, and sort of storing it in that way, but for the execution of tasks. And now we have a third leg of an IT system architecture evolving, which is the processing of data at low or high latencies, at large or small scale, in real time, in batch. It doesn't really matter, but it's, it's a different beast. And so you've now got something that offers you new capabilities. So it doesn't supplant the data warehouse any more than the data where I supplanted the mainframe or the ERP system. Right. Um, now, at the same time, sort of back to what I said before, who's ever driving the most corporate productivity, the, yeah. the, the, the traditional, let's call it the traditional BI data warehouse, um, failed to deliver, in my opinion, on a lot of the promises that were made. The 360 degree view of the business, the predictive analytics, it was just... That's called hype. It was hype, but they didn't live up to it. Right now, it'd be hard to live up to this hype. I mean, I guess the internet lived up to its hype, right? So sometimes it happens. Um, we'll see with big data. The practitioners that you talk to um, in the, the data warehouse, the, the business intelligence world, they're constantly trying to figure out how to make what they have better. They're chasing chips, you know, they're maybe bringing in the latest thing. Oh, man, the tease is here, let's try that. You know, they're always trying new things. Um, it maybe helps a little bit for a while and then deluge of data and they're back spinning, chasing their, their tails. So that cycle is not going to change uh, uh, anytime soon, right? And they're still playing now a vital role within the organization. It's tied to the processes. They're locked in you know, to the organization. But at the same time, this world is being, that traditional world is being dragged into Hadoop. So those two worlds are coming together. Right now it's like the Hadoop tail wagging the dog. Mm -hmm. Do you see that Flipping. I mean, it's a different version of the question that you said I don't really know on before, but I'm going to ask it anyway. I was going to give you the same answer, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. but well, you said you couldn't yeah. be pinned down, well, so well, I'm trying the, to the, the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> I don't see either or, I see both. Because query and retrieval is one half of a problem. Think about it like Web 2.0, right? Web 1.0 was a publishing metaphor. Here are these words, you give them to this guy, he HTMLizes them, formats them, pushes a button, they go into this thing which broadcasts them out to the world, but there's no rewrite. Along comes HTTP, RPC, and suddenly REST-based web services develop, and now we have read-write-web. That's a different, it, it changes architectures, it changes what you can accomplish. The big data stuff, not specifically Hadoop, but all the processing, plus the low latency, which we don't have in the database world, because you can't store data and then act on it in real time, you have a new way. And part of that is that, what is Hadoop? It's a storage system and a processing engine. It's not an ETL tool, it's not a pipe, it's not a database. And so I have a read-write system. That's a different set of infrastructure. It's not optimized to get data out real fast for query, but with that read-write system, I can change so much of what I've done with information as opposed to IT being the arbiters of taste and. I talk to you and then I cook up a meal and then I serve it up to you. Well, you know, now with, with sort of the big data tech, you're starting to give people the kitchen. Mark, what's your thoughts on um, sort of the structure of the industry? I've said many times, it's, mm. we live in this world, it's almost, it's, a, it's an oligopoly, right? You got five, six, maybe seven yeah. companies controlling the chessboard. Oracle goes and buys a company, you know, they own Java, they own MySQL, right? Uh, the list goes on. Um, EMC could make big moves, they have made some moves with VMware. So it's almost as though the sort of innovative startup, their objective is to get, have an exit. Maybe, that's, maybe there's an IPO yeah. in, in it for some of them, some small minority. Um, but generally, I don't see that changing. And so, uh, and I wonder if you agree or disagree with that, but the question I have is, is do you feel, uh, do you agree with that and do, do, do you feel as though those whales can continue to control that chessboard, make moves, and then 
morph into this new world you know, pretty, without too much disruption, you know, they'll cross the chasm. I think they've figured out how to do that. Do you agree or disagree? I agree in principle, but it, it could play out differently. And I, you know, when you look at what's happened, you look at a bubble chart of s sort of the size of companies in tech over the last 10 years, and you just play that forward, you have four or five giant bubbles and tiny little dots all around mm -hmm. them. And they've just essentially outsourced their R&D function and their risk-taking functions. The problem is every time they ingest them, they do a crap job. IBM, Oracle, SAP, they've all digested companies and poorly executed on the promise that those companies mm -hmm. were expected to deliver. All these database companies, the Netezas and the Verticas and the thises and the thats, how much have they actually done for those vendors? The answer is it, it varies. Really, they just become more price book entries for people to throw at the wall. And there's some point where you can't just be solving things by buying product. You have to have rethinking of architectures. And those vendors are not, because they have lines of business that are drawn up specifically yeah. they around They don't want things. to cannibalize their own thing. We saw that, exactly. like Cisco was a great example. I mean, they were on a run, and on Web 1.0, they bought everyone, and then the integration nightmare. I mean, I will give EMC credit. They do know how to swallow a company. Um, but operationally, they're, they're buying lines of business. But you're right, yes. we, you know, we were talking all week about old way, new way, and fundamentally, this data platform is a new architecture, and and you know, some of the things just aren't invented yet. Right. And I think the entrepreneurial community is ripe with innovation in the sense that you got guys beavering away out there saying, hey, you know what? I don't want to go work for the big company. I got you know, 15 years experience doing data warehouse, business intelligence, data management, or whatever. I'm just going to build my own system and bring that to the market. So you're right, there is a little bit of a picks and shovels, Dave, right now. But the database again, is particularly yeah. tricky. Well, right. well, database yeah. is interesting. What well, unstructured data gives a, program, so a little bit more programmatic freedom, right? So you have, you're not schema bound, right? So you now can have some range, right? So I think, you know, our concept of data as code, building off our infrastructure as code riff this morning was interesting because infrastructure as code is changing the cloud in business because you're talking about simultaneous deployment of code, data, and teams. I'd, I'd say there's a second piece to this too, right? There's the buyer side, the IT audience. Think about what's happening in IT. You mentioned cloud, right? Yeah. Um, all these business departments are running around buying apps to serve their department, and it's shifting to SaaS, yeah. and it's shifting to cloud, and IT's role is becoming not the guys who have to do everything, it's become sort of, well, administer the app in, in a light, remote way. <laughs> and so what does IT's role become? They're really, the main thing is data the data to connect the Salesforce app to the CRM app to this other app to this internal thing yep. which may be hosted which is my ERP solution plus all of these other bits and pieces. Plumbing yeah. and data. And that is totally different than the role of IT in the past in many yeah. ways. It's interesting, you mentioned, you mentioned mainframes and talking about the data warehouse in the old days and all the, yeah. the uh, old app systems and stuff and kind of joking yeah. on that. But one thing that's very, very interesting and this is kind of my my, it popped out of my head when I saw it the, over and over here in that same term, data processing. Now, remember back in the textbooks, 1970s? DP. Data processing was, in, was, a, was, a, DP was, a, manager. was, a, was a discipline. Yeah, yes. and you know, data processing was punch cards, right? So the DP department, so now we're in data processing. Yeah. So we're, here we go. Here we go, we're back in the data processing. So, okay data pipelines, data processing, data management, data stewardship, we're seeing this, this kind of coming back. Again, coming back to your other point, the riff on is architectures. Yes. You know, and I hate the word software mainframe, and I know, I know that's been talked about with Paul Moritz all the time, but um, I don't like it, but I, you know, I, I don't have another term. You know, if data processing is going to be a discipline again, okay, in a new architecture, what do you think that's going to look like? And obviously, you know, I don't think any vendor really has the answer yet. And I, I will give Cloudera props. I mean, what they're proposing with Impala is academically and theoretically and being executed as a multi-resource platform that enables uh, resource-based data processing, meaning no one vendor can do anything. You know, yeah. so, but Hortonworks, same thing. So what is your take on all this? Well, I think trying to say that an architecture is something that a vendor can sell you is a mistake. I don't think vendors sell architecture, they sell products, and products fit into larger architectures. And I think what we're, like, let, let's use the term data platform, because that's what I like to call it. Yeah. Data platform should subsume data warehouse. 
and Hadoop and a real-time processing framework, a Storm or a Kafka or whatever your favorite, you know, yeah. soup du jour is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have to start thinking about where do you draw the boundary lines between platform and application in a new and different way. And that gets so little attention. Yeah. I think yeah. that I the agree. vendors don't even understand it because part of it is that you have to remove the old frame of reference. The old frame of reference says, here's a box, and here's a box, and here's a box, and here's this thing. I'm going to shove it into a and, box. And preserve special interests, right? So, you know. Exactly. I the gardeners and foresters of the world, they have their waves and their quadrants. That's how they make their money. We have, the magic, we have, we have, a, new, we have a new report coming out called The Magic Kingdom. Yes. And The uh, Magic Kingdom will be, <laughs> I tweeted that one, it's got a lot of, when can I see The Magic Kingdom report? Well, it's kind of bigger than the quadrant, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we haven't released it yet. Uh, no, I mean, but yeah, a little slow, but that's a nice, the magic quad is for people who aren't paying attention, right? So they need to see things in, in... I think that it actually is a sign of the difference between a stable market and an unstable market. Yes. And I look at IT markets as periods of punctuated equilibrium. We had a nice period of reasonable stability on the data side. The web stuff was going crazy. Yeah. But now all of a sudden, just like 1992 or so, this part of the market's going insane. And it's going to be chaotic for the next few Which years. Part of the market? the I mean, data in, side of the market, not the I'm taking and doing transactions, data but the data infrastructure, data infrastructure, data management, data storage, data retrieval, data delivery, all yeah. of those things. Because we've had several orders of magnitude of technology change in capability, and the software architectures have not shifted to match. Just like in Web 2.0, software architectures went from app servers on centralized grids yes. to stateless architectures and browsers. There's no doubt that this decade is a lot more interesting than, than last decade. I mean, there was some, some yeah. cool stuff with mobile for sure, but I mean, from an enterprise standpoint, it was compliance and I mean, it sort of gave a nice boon to the, to yeah. the BI business. Thank you, Enron. Uh, but you're right, this is a much more disruptive and volatile <laughs> okay, we are Time wrapping here, yeah. up day two. Mark Madsen, great way to end it and kind of reading the tea leaves, kind of stepping back, looking at the world view, uh, kind of riffing on, out here, kind of like a bunch of musicians playing our notes on, our, on, um, on the marketplace, looking at what's happening. And uh, I think it's a really good perspective. I think you know, the summary of this conversation is, is one of great innovation opportunity, great uh, disruption. Uh, disruption kind of, a lot of things coming together at the same time, multiple theaters as they say. Uh, but the platform really is the focus and uh, we're going to be covering it all day tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned, this is theCUBE at the Strata Conference at siliconangle.com's exclusive coverage of Strata Conference and we'll be right back for a wrap right after the short break. <laughs>